everyone wants to get information out of what? YouTube, will really. Do the videos, let's watch. So I've tried also to put some videos so that at least uh, I can carry all of you along. <laughs> so the, 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 the greatest desire of God is to tell us what is going to happen before it happens. And he says, Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Amen. That is great. My God can tell me the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he has done. Mm -hmm. And in the few slides we'll go through and the words we'll read, I pray that the faculties of our minds may be enlightened, that this light shines not as from myself, but as from the throne of uh, Jehovah. So here we are. And I want to, to as some of the videos are, are starting, this one, you see uh, Koreans reacting after receiving gifts of the Bible in the underground church. And uh, if we can have a little bit less of light, that would be good. And look at that. That is pure excitement because they have gotten their hands on the Bible. I want you to see the reaction in their faces upon receiving this one. Right. But uh, uh, for us, what has happened to the church meanwhile, uh, this is what the church looks like in America. It's a pastor living. Uh, I don't want to say much. Let's go. receive the light and they're supposed to take it to the world. This is a typical sad church session. If, if, if these are the people we are supposed to be preaching to. As we strategize, this now we are supposed to them, but that is how our services looks like the previous uh, video. And uh, if you come to Africa, the scene is totally even more chaotic. This is manifestation of spirits in the church. This is all done in the name of Jesus. Whatever change. Demo, we have them. the light that spiritualism will come into the church and uh, chain of sickness, chain of disease, chain of affliction, infirmity, begin to and people have a lot of faith. This is a church that hosts 8,500 people, one call. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> to them, that's salvation, that's being very close to God. And, uh, well, let's look at what's happening underground church. This is now South Korea, where Christianity has, at least has been given leeway. They can have time to sing for their God. I want you to look at that and listen. They are not Adventists. They are Methodists. Sounds like music God can appreciate to the glory of His name. I deliberately did not want to put some of our music here from West Africa and even from Kenya. And even what has happened, Pathfinder Club, marching and stuff, you'll be shocked at how far we have moved from what was the traditional thinking of Adventist church. But it will be presumptive 
to assume that as a church we are prospering mm-hmm. in the right direction because while we are supposed to give people the image of what true conversion is we have threatened for ourselves in fact we are proceeding to the point where we have changed God into our own image what we are doing is that we want people to we want God to accept us in our plans and that's why you find that instead of the church moving through the reading of the word and the spirit of prophecy we have other documents which we refer to and we are in that comfort zone and brethren sabbath after sabbath this is happening recently like uh, two sabbaths ago i preached in one of uh, the big churches here in Nairobi, and i had to fill two forms to be allowed to go to the pulpit. I filled the first one, I gave the details, I thought they would be good. Then after once I was called, I was told to give some other details. And it looked like I was applying for a loan. <laughs> and that's where it is right now. And uh, fortunately, the people who had introduced me there also stood their ground with the pastor. And it has become harder because people want to know, one of the forms was asking, what am I going to talk about? And then there are three specific things you're not supposed to bring to the church without sending the script in advance. That is country living. Uh, uh, then there's a uh, true education. I don't know whether you guys have created a problem in this city while we were in Red Talk Talk, but apparently there are some things people don't want to preach. <laughs> but I thank God eventually. Yeah? The, the medical missionary work. Yes. But God is also changing things. I've seen some people coming with uh, a new mind on medical mission. God will do his work. Yeah. So, while West Africa is doing very badly, uh, you know, this, this is Boko Haram has great havoc on Christianity and people there are very devout because they are not in the desert. They know how bad it is. Boko Haram walks into a church and they shoot 18 people and this has happened again and again and again. In fact last year there were seven shootings for the churches. Okay, the graphics are breaking, sorry for that. And this girl is giving a testimony of the way her father always told her to read the Bible and be close to God, like I tell my daughter here. And uh, one day, people are worshipping in the church like this, and Boko Haram, 11 men came and shot all of them. And uh, those who remained knew what it means to be close to God. Now for us, we have enjoyed a period of peace and what that does usually, it brings in us a spirit of complacency. You're in the world of this. You can always rely on the church of leadership to do things. You do not spend a lot of time reading the Bible. In fact, if we were to approach it, I was asking myself, apart from probably when I'm struggling, driving to my family, I put a sermon I listen for one hour and a half or two hours. Ordinarily, it's not easy to pick the Bible and spend one hour agonizing with God to give you the revelation of the mystery of Daniel chapter 11. You want to understand what is going to happen because when he says, he tells us what is going to happen, even from the the truth is that there is revelation, revelation to be given, but it's not just going to be thrown to us. We have to spend time with the Bible. We have to listen and ask questions. In fact, as Brother Jao was speaking, when he talked about what happened to our first parents and the way they sealed themselves, the, the, the feet, garments, and the parable of Christ and when the, 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 the fig tree was there but I've never made that connection 
ile ni fi hii ni fi to let's go on let's read we are looking for specific things in the bible but we can bring ourselves to the point where it's easy for god to talk to us we are impressionable by his word because we value it but most of the time the bible and bible study is an appendix to our businesses and after that someone i said i will I will make a vow to God. I've seen, we are told don't be in a hurry to make a vow to God, but I will make a vow to spend more time with His Word because there's light in it. So, brethren, the world has changed. Let's go. I started thinking about how things have changed in 40 years. When I was in college, nobody would have dreamed that we were all going to be taking photographs with one of these uh, uh, instead the of. The old form, I know my children might not know what that is. Now, on one hand, she's holding the camera which we used a long time ago like this and on the other hand she's holding the other phone remember the one we used to put your finger and take it around and <laughs> that's what we used to so in 40 years technology has changed the world is so changed and we have the same levels of doing things there is no reformation there is no Revival. And we know very clear reformation means change of rhythm and levels. How are we going to do things the same? Who spends, like my landlord's boy, can spend the whole day in the house watching movies? The whole day, literally, without going out. Among other things, how do I interest that kind of person who is lost in this technology jargon? With the word of God, the still small voice. The only thing that can do that is probably your character. Two days ago, he came and spent almost two hours in my house. And it's not easy to get him to do that. And he had a problem and he thought he couldn't talk to me. And he asked me to pray. And I prayed, and I've, I've never thought that he would be even interested in prayer. I sometimes come, I stand with him, but he saw something that would probably draw him. And I thought to my God, if I've ever done something wrong, if I've ever shouted, please forgive me. But I'm glad without doing anything else, without even calling for the Bible study, something has made this boy to avail himself to, come, to talk to me and to ask for prayers. And as God who liveth works, the thing he asked me to pray for when he went, he was successful. He wanted a visa to America. Mm -hmm. And his parents, two years ago, they went, they were refused. So, we prayed. He went, in 20 minutes, it was given. Do you think he has some faith in prayers? Yes. yes. He waited for me when I came, opened the gate, and he came and told me, he okay to name a pattern. I screamed outside the, the embassy. Of course, he has value for that. <laughs> but uh, I thank God that he gave him an opportunity to believe in the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we spent the two hours I was trying to tell him what not to do when he goes there. And uh, I gave him examples of the people. Who are doing. So people are so lost in technology that brethren, we may not be able to reach them by putting speakers, no matter how big, mm -hmm. and trying to put up. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we stop, but I'm saying your character may speak to people more and impress them than anything you can do on a pulpit. And that should be the way we should go. Now, if uh, let's talk about this technology a bit. I do not know whether it has it has come to your attention that much of this technology we are seeing. The people who are inventing these things are actually doing it under the influence of specific drugs. Are you aware? Those who have been researching, you will find, including the person who saw the structure of the DNA, for them to be able to do gene editing, certain hand to show them. So they go, they sit, they take what is called communal drugs. It's called ayahuasca. Sometimes they use LSD. It's called uh, you expand the horizons of your mind using LSD. Now, when a person is told in those drugs, who do you think is going to talk to them? Mm -hmm. 
Satan is going to talk to them directly. How well can you focus? Can you stay up all night and code? But the other part of success is creativity. The ability to think outside this the box. This is on CNN. To have the breakthrough moment. A moment that can turn your millions into billions. The billionaires I know, almost without exception, use hallucinogens on a regular basis. Tim Ferriss is a Valley Insider. He's an entrepreneur. Listen and he wrote the book about optimizing your time. His lifestyle insights have developed a cult-like following. The creativity comes from drugs. The, the people I know who are trying to be very disruptive and uh, look at the problems in the world that exist and ask completely new questions. So they might look at something that's existed for hundreds of years and see something completely different. You know, people open about this. Is it totally acceptable that sometimes you got to solve a really good problem and you just do these kind of drugs? Uh, the hallucinogens are, are discussed very openly in private settings. So if people aren't ashamed of it. Using these smart drugs is like pouring gasoline on the fire, but the, the hallucinogens used very, very intelligently help you decide where to put the fire. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Brethren, the technology you are seeing, some of it, these guys use these drugs and see things, and they see formulas when they go to the laboratories, they are able to come up with, including the iPad and the iPhone. Steve Jobs was on LSD. That's the truth. It is there. Now, when this man, this is how we can have constricted thinking. This was a chairman of IBM, and by all means, he knew machines, he knew their potential, but he was quoted as saying that. I think there is a world market for maybe five computers. What was this concept of computer those days? Probably this city. Mm. There are many wires. The heat is generated. They could roast eggs as they wait for lunch. Mm. It was the kind of machine he saw in his mind. But little did he know that Satan is going to bring into the hands of each member of the human family this technology. You can literally watch the news anywhere for the young. Mobile phone. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, with the discovery, right now they're using graphene for the manufacture of batteries. So the batteries are set to last long. Manufacture of flexible screens so the mobile phones are going to get thinner. You can actually roll it up and put it somewhere where you want to watch it. You just have to it. It's getting there. That means people will have more and more images to address their minds. Now, the world has been preparing for war. Also, we cannot ignore as technology advances in the field of uh, maybe mobile phone, TV, connectivity, we have also a warning that it is not going to be business as usual. This, these guys have taken time to confirm to the world that we mean business to the point that they can challenge America. And technology also has something else which is going to happen very soon. And I was surprised when I listened to this. Well, this guy is called uh, Barry Trower and is the person people go to when they are looking at mobile telephony and the mobile telephony frequency, which is microwave. Mm -hmm. Now, microwave also has been weaponized in a great sense that God's people need to understand it could be used to get us into trouble. But I want you to listen to uh, Troy. Joined the Royal Navy listen. Uh, in 1960, and I specialized in microwave warfare. Uh, radar, obviously, which uses microwave, but they don't just teach you radar, they teach you all about microwaves and other uses. So I understood about microwave warfare and how it can damage people and how it can harm people. And when governments don't like a group of people, for instance, the, the ladies who protest at Greenham Common in England about the American missile base, they camped, they were microwaved. We microwaved in Northern Ireland to make them sick. 
uh, it, it goes on all over the world. And it, it's a weapon that you don't know you're being targeted because the dose is very, very low, which is actually more dangerous than a high dose. It's very, very low and it may take a year or two, but you can, you can cause neurological damage and cancers. Okay. Now, fortunately, and I thank God for bringing to us the message of country living, microwave does not cover very long distances. So if you are living in the countryside, it might not be able to target. I have my own suspicions that in larger cities sometimes they use this to target people during worship services. It happens. It makes people make mistakes. In fact, the same drawer was showing the way they microwave someone when he's driving a car and he drives that car out of the road. And please don't fear. I'm not giving you this information so that the thing is that this technology, it's not new. By the way, this is not new technology. You'll be surprised during the Second World War, this thing was being used, but not as refined as it is right now. So, when you talk about country living, please understand, in fact, we don't go there even to hide. It's for character building. And God is going to work with us. If if now it comes to preparation, brothers and sisters, for country living, we are also lagged behind. Kenya as a country, we as citizens of this country, when the messages were running in most of other countries, we were lagged behind because I can say leadership did not agitate us. You have had an opportunity to share with people from Zimbabwe, Zambia, South Africa, and many of them worked in advance. Lagged when it was cheaper for us now, we have waited until the 11th hour, and we will have to work harder to secure. What makes me feel sorry about ourselves is what I see Americans doing. We have what they call the Preppers Club or the Preppers Union. And I want you to see how much they have read the Bible and how much they have taken them to prepare because they have faith. They don't have any book by the DOH called Country Living. They do not know anything else except by reading this creature. After studying the Bible, John's Christian values compelled him to warn other believers by writing a book. I actually believe that we're entering what I call a window of the Lord's return, that sometime between now and 2020, we'll actually see the Lord coming back. And, uh, and those, the Bible, you know, lays out that those are going to be some pretty trying years. Trying years where, according to John's interpretation of the book of Revelation, food won't be readily available. The Bible says that in the last days, that a quart of wheat will cost a day's wages. Which means that either food becomes very scarce, or money loses a lot of value. So during that period, the people will literally be starving. So it's not going to be a pretty picture. But John doesn't plan to be amongst the starving. He's being interviewed by a TV station. His off-the-grid techniques to provide his own food during the end times. We are literally in the time of the last days right now. Listen, brethren. Right now you have choices. That picture is not made, meant to make you laugh. If I told my children to step on the wheelbarrow we are moving, I don't have choice because they have to move with me. Right now, you have choices. And I want to tell you a lot of things have been prepared for Adventists. I want to give you that information with a lot of confidence because I know part of what is happening in the Bible. You have seen things happening in the Muslim world with the breaking of uh, the Islam uh, militants and fundamentalists. Mm -hmm. In fact, the same fate awaits us because America's uh, in place, uh, the correct kind of legal framework to declare as fundamentalists. Who has been foreign? In fact, the law has been passed on fundamentalism and it says fundamentalism is 
anything that does not go with the convention. Any person who refuses to follow what the majority says for the common good is a fundamentalist. Yes, and they need to be eliminated from the face of the earth. Because they say we are in the threshold of something which many generations have tried and it has not worked and no one is going to stop it. The creation of a new world war order where the rule of the law is going to be carried to the letter. And one of the things that they used to do that is to control food. There's something called Codex Alimentarius. I've mentioned it before. From the year 1970, in fact 1972, coming to date, they have been trying to get control of the food chain in the world. How do we get control of food? Because if we can get food, people will be hungry, and people, when they are hungry, they are willing to listen. And you know what the LNG word says? For lack of food and water, many people, country living page 26, will sacrifice on the altar of appetite their God-given inheritance. And God gives us a chance now to prepare ourselves. And that preparation is that prepare a place for yourself without time. It has to begin at some point and it has to be based on faith. It's not what you are holding in your hands. Because that seems to be the greatest problem. Now, here is a group of <coughs> pastors and priests during the time of Inquisition. And uh, they, much as they had the warning, because Hitler did not wake up in a day, and by the way, he was one of the greatest users of drugs. His medical records have been made public. So who was talking to him? Because some of the technology which was discovered during the Second World War, it is beyond this world. In fact, some of them, which even today, some equipments are being manufactured, Second World War. Hitler used to talk to Satan directly. He would tell him what to do. His mistress would say that. So look at these people and once the choices have been narrowed, it is, it is painful. When these things were filmed, over 1,600 priests, representing many denominations, still remain alive. They I'm sorry, the, the graphics are not that good. Czechoslovakia, France, and Holland. That's how hungry they are. Mm. Guys who used to have good mansions and living congregations. Yeah, they are. Let me move some of the pictures, they could be disturbing to some. And uh, they were found without having prepared for anything, and they were taken to the concentration camp. And because they are known, they are good at influencing people, they were taken to special bunkers where they could not talk to people. And when the Red Army came, actually, it found them completely uh, without food, almost to the point of death. Now, if we have to prepare ourselves for the development of character and avoidance of the next thing I want to talk about, we have brethren to look for a way to spend more time with God, whether you're in the country or you're in town, but remember, the options are narrow. What I could do yesterday I may not be able to do it today. It's, it's, I mean, it's common knowledge. Guys, do you remember when we used to preach in Jabaji Gardens? you remember? Mm -hmm. I mean, every lunch hour we could go and talk to each other for us when we were tamaking in Nairobi. We used to be in Arakan Walk. There used to be another center there. And we have been asking ourselves with some, some uh, youth, what can we do to bring a center where we can talk to people in town center again? You have to pay a lot of money. We asked and we were told it's 7,200 per evening session. I want to take a projector, go near the can walk, there's a building there. I asked city council, can I pitch there, put a speaker, and just teach people here. I was told 7,200 per evening. It used to be free. We went to preach in the uh, Nanuke in Kodamu because Lock 10, Lock 5. It's a park there, just next to the park. And we pay 2,000 per day 
for three weeks. That's forty-two thousand. The years before, we were there in the same uh, region, and we could pitch our equipment and just deliver to the public. That's all. Is it getting harder to reach people out there? Okay. Yes, opportunities are closing. Now, spiritualism, spiritualism on the rise. If you have been keen, America has got talent, Asia has got talent. It has moved from music to all calls. Mm. What can people do? And some amazing shows you will be surprised. <laughs>
the terrain. And they got, using technology, there's something called voice to scar technology. They got one very serious target to dream, it's called Wahari, that we need to change the world by using that fundamental Sunni Islam. So what we do, everyone who does not believe in that is an heretic. And the Muslims started killing each other. And that brand of religion is called what? Wahhabism. That's what is happening. And now, they say we want to establish a caliphate. We have a leader who is political and he's also a religious leader. He's going to lead us into canon of some sort. This is what is happening. South America with big problems. There are some places they are godless, like Haiti. By the way, people, the places which have experienced serious and the LNG White says that earthquakes will be an indication of God's love. Do you have an idea of how demented the thinking of people in, I mean the people who gave us this technology we are using, Japanese. It's the place with the most corrupt morality, incest, the highest in the world. Where? Japan. Let's go to Haiti. They have suffered the ravage of, of uh, earthquakes mm. severally over the years. Go back 100 years <laughs> repeatedly. Key problem there, young boys during the period like we do circumcision ceremonies here when they get into youth, they are supposed to move from their parents' home and they go to sleep with men. And the men have to give them something so that they can grow. I don't want to talk openly, but that's exactly what happens. So what's the name of Sodom in there? It is greater than America. Because the spirit starts getting the young people when they're young. That's what is happening. Now part of South America, Now, do you know who those are? It's a group of businessmen. Yes, they are praying for money. That they may be blessed when they go to do deals. I went to a part of Congo called, called uh, Lubumbashi and I saw a huge church the size of this compound but what amazed me is the type of cars which were parked out of that, outside that church. I mean there's no, no, no Japanese car. It's, it's all German made. I mean you can think of the cars, some of them they are stretch limousines from here to there. Then I asked my driver, what's happened here? And he told me people come from as far away as 500 kilometers to come and worship here because this guy is able to give them money. And that's the money sometimes you want to collect through a fair means. You are not work for it. Do you know labor is divided? God says six days shall bow to labor. Mm -hmm. Don't try to get. Please teach even our own children to labor because it is right. God expects us to be that way. And He's going to bless the work of your hands. Now, I don't want to belabor this, but I wanted to give an impression that while people are worshipping the devil directly in some parts of the world for money, the leaders, on the other hand, are actually worshipping the devil by taking Finally, place. another scientist, Francis Crick, co-discoverer of the structure of DNA itself, apparently LSD and DNA, uh, very yeah, closely tied together, uh, he told his friend at one point that he had perceived the double helix shape while on LSD, and that LSD use was common among Cambridge academics at the time. Many of them used it in small amounts as a thinking tool. Cambridge hmm. University, and you want your child to go there, or who to exam and to become a, a graduate of Cambridge, Cambridge University. What do they use? LSD. As a thinking tool. Look at Steve Jobs. Such zealots have a rich history in Silicon Valley. One of the most iconic users, Steve Jobs. I moved here to 
work in the Apple garage building Apple Ones. That was 1976. This guy has a salary of almost 47 million per month. The and guy you're just seeing. Steve Jobs as the creator of one of the most successful companies in the world. Daniel knew him as the guy he used to trip with in college. It was a spiritual thing. Steve and I developed a friendship when we figured out that we had both read this amazing book called Be Here Now, okay. which is about psychedelics and spirituality. You said that Steve had said that LSD was one of the best things he ever did. Why, why was that? It expands your consciousness. Yes. It could have been mushrooms. It could have been peyote. It could have been any number of other things. Conversely, Steve was never really interested in smoking pot. That did not expand consciousness. Today, psychedelic research is having a renaissance. People in the industry say there are more studies now than there have been in decades. So there's a... Guys, that's what's happening. Now, in the background of that, a storm is coming. And God's people, we were seated in this house by the grace of God. Sister Wallace told us, as we three stood there on the deep of the platform, that a terrible storm of persecution was coming like a windstorm that blew down every standing object. There was not a seven day Adventist to be seen. They, like the disciples, forsook Christ and his uh, friend. All who had sought possessions who were never seen anymore. You know, sometimes I tell God, please let that time come. But I see how many people we have not prepared. She says then the church arose um, as a movement without any form of leadership. Okay. Every man worshiping God in truth and righteousness mm -hmm. and moving forward as an army with a banner, terrible, to conquer and to take over. Amen. <coughs> that world we have just seen, I've just painted a picture of what's happening. Middle East, go to, 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 to Korea. Things are happening and those are the people we are supposed to reach. And we have to do it. Brethren, remember when Israel would not do what they had to do in a period of peace, something had to happen. And if peace has to be removed, let it be. But during that time, God wants to lessen our suffering. So he tells us, out of the cities, find a place where you can grow your own food. Because the problem of buying and selling is going to be a very serious one. When God says very serious, it's not a joke. Please, and I want to say this, that for women and children, the suffering is going to be great. Because sometimes men flee when Things have, have been happening in Congo. Those guys are here. Oh, you've been your silver. And porters. And porters. And porters. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Even in Middle East right now, I'm telling you, mothers, all the rebels in Yemen, when things got hard, they were given visas to go to Germany. So they left, and women and children are left there. We have to work extra hard to ensure that this doesn't happen. Brethren, a storm is coming before we are put in these camps. First of all, let's prepare ourselves spiritually. I don't mind behind, being behind this barbed wire, but let me be caught coming in the city to preach. Because some people will go into the dungeons, but not because they were living in the cities, it's because the wave caught them when they were in the cities to evangelize. And I think I would like to, this, to end this session here. God willing, when we have another session, we'll talk about that. This talks about uh, how the world has changed as a result of use of the conventional drugs and why we have to support the medical missionary work. Because the greatest problems are sailing the world right now, conventional system of healing. God willing, we'll talk about that. I appreciate it. And it's a simple way of putting this message to you to open up. Let's see how the world is going to be. Now, these things may look hard. I have a verse that I'd like to share. Brother, if you can read for me the book of Isaiah 29, verse 11. Isaiah 29, verse 11. We cannot afford to say this because this is what has been said generally. 29, 11. Yes, you can read 11 and 12. And the vision of God is determined to you Please. as the words will be done. Please, up and then read. Don't try to read, just slowly. And the vision of the book, and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. 
and the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee, and he said, I am not learned. Thank you so much. Brothers and sisters, we are not in such a position that we have no revelation. People are going to high school and universities to look for this education. But our God, remember the first news during opening? He has this vision, vision open to us. There is a work to be done. There is a method to be employed. It is not half a second. We have to use God's method. There is a blueprint which we have to follow. In the past, it has suffered because people did not believe. And as Brother Jao really emphasized, we have to go back to that blueprint. We are either of the kingdom that works with the Christ in his terms, or we are detractors from what God wants to achieve. I pray with God help us that this vision be clear to us and that we may fit ourselves and our children, each one taking their position. May God bless you. Amen. We can sing another verse of 292.